So once you've learned the Docker basic concepts and understood how it works, uh, it's important to see how Docker is actually used in practice. So in software development workflow, you will know you have this uh, classical steps of development and you have continuous delivery or continuous integration, uh, and then eventually it gets deployed on some environment, right? It could be a test environment, develop environment. So it's important to see how Docker actually integrates in all of those steps. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to concentrate exactly on that. So we're going to see some overview of the flow and then we're going to zoom in on different parts and see how Docker is actually used in those individual steps. So let's consider a simplified scenario where you're developing a JavaScript application on your laptop, right? On your local development environment, your JavaScript application uses a MongoDB database and instead of installing it on your laptop you download a docker container from the docker hub so you connect your javascript application with the mongodb and you start developing so now let's say you develop the application first version of the application locally and now you want to test it or you want to deploy it on the uh, development environment where a tester in your team is gonna test it so you commit your JavaScript application in Git or in some other version control system uh, that will trigger a continuous um, integration, a Jenkins build or whatever you have configured and Jenkins build will produce artifacts from your application. So first you will build your JavaScript application and then create a Docker image out of that JavaScript artifact, right? So what happens to this Docker image once it gets created by Jenkins build, it gets pushed to a private Docker repository. So usually in a company, uh, you would have a private repository because you don't want other people to have access to your images. So you push it there. And now as a next step could be con configured on Jenkins or some other scripts or tools, um, that Docker image, has to be deployed on a development server. So you have a development server that pulls the image from the private repository, your JavaScript application image, and then pulls the MongoDB that your JavaScript application depends on from a Docker hub. And now you have two containers, one your custom container and a publicly available MongoDB container running on dev, on dev server. And they talk to each other. You have to configure it, of course. They talk and communicate to each other and run as an app. So now if a tester, for example, or another developer logs in to a dev server, they, be, they will be able to test the application. So this is a simplified workflow, how Docker will work in a real life development process. In the next videos, I'm going to show you a hands-on demo of how to actually do all of this in practice. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.